Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our series, Is It Worth It? Today, we'll explore if the jackets from Quiton Napoli are worth six to $12,000 retail price or not. <laughs> Especially in recent years, with an increasing casualization even on the formal spectrum of sites, Naples has become somewhat of the suit and jacket capital of the world. As such, it's unsurprising that many brands try to associate themselves with Napoli in their brand name and in their marketing materials. Interestingly, it also often comes with prices that just make you want to say Mamma Mia. In the past, we already did a similar video on Isaiah and Prioni, and you can check the videos out in our playlist. So if everyone's ready, let's get it, Kitan. What? Is only personal to make stupid puns? All right, we got some pros and cons for you. I cut a Keton jacket apart so we can really see if it's worth your hard-earned money or not. But first, let's talk about the brand history. Keton was founded by Chiro Paone who is from a fifth-generation fabric merchant family in Italy. Paone started a suit and jacket tailoring company in 1956, first calling it Cipa from Ciro Paone. He tried to take advantage of Il Boom, which was Italy's post-World War II economic upswing. And to learn more about that, check out this video here. At the time, Rome and Florence were more at the center of the Italian fashion. In 1968, Paone intentionally flipped the script and tried focusing on Napoli. He began marketing Neapolitan style as a casual, more vibrant, yet still stylish alternative. He dissolved his company Chipa and created Keton, which is an ancient Greek tunic. Basically, it reflected a Neapolitan culture as a blend of Italy and Greece. During the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, Paone was a driving force behind making Naples a sartorial important town. Because of his charisma, connections, and business sense, he became the leader of that movement. Basically, it was all about highlighting and emphasizing the Neapolitan tailoring tradition. The Italian fashion journalist Angelo Flaccavento once said, he was the patron saint of Neapolitan tailoring in the sense that he gathered all of the tailors in the Naples area and created this whole myth. It was an art in danger of disappearing completely. For his contributions to the Italian clothing industry, he received an Order of Merit in 1999 for labor by the Italian government. Guided by Paone and members of his extended family, Kidon grew very quickly in the 1990s and the first decade of the 21st century. After adding a women's line in 1995, they rapidly expanded in offering other things. That included denim, knitwear, casual shirts, accessories, but also stuff like sunglasses or fragrances. Giro Paone died in 2021, but he led the company to great success under his personal motto, Il Melio del Melio Pio Uno, which means as much as the best of the best plus one. In 2023, Keaton operates five clothing factories. They're located in Colecchio, Marcianese, Biella, and Arzano. Arzano is, in fact, the suburb of Naples, which is also where the company is headquartered. Kidon also operates 54 boutiques worldwide. In total, it employs about 800 employees, with about half of them directly involved in the making of clothing. A closer look reveals that to this day, Kiton is a family affair. For example, the current CEO, Antonio De Mattes, is a nephew of Ciro Paone. The company's vice president and creative director of women's wear is Maria Joanna Paone, who is Ciro's daughter. President of Kiton USA is Antonio Paone, who is another nephew of the founder Ciro. So, with that being said, what is the ethos of Ketone and how are they positioned in the marketplace? I mean, they definitely frame themselves as being at the top of the game when it comes to men's clothing. Remember, the best of the best plus one. So, Ketone is marketed as an exceptionally well-made and handmade garment. The fabrics they use are all rare, super soft, and ultra luxurious. And then the whole thing is assembled by skilled craftsmen using heritage tools and traditions, as the current Keaton CEO likes to put it. I like to imagine our company as a sort of Michelin-starred restaurant. 
The quality of the product is ensured by the ingredients, the hands that create it, and the eyes that scrutinize it. The quality of the product is the result of meticulous research work. Keton is all this and more. There's definitely a constant emphasis on the handmade nature of the workmanship, as well as the luxurious materials that are being used. They also try to emphasize a carefree, independent lifestyle that is very much in line with the Neapolitan spirit. If you look at the Ketone logo, you see that bright red dot, what is supposed to symbolize the sun shining over Naples. But Ketone jackets, sport coats, and blazers often had bolder colors than the average ready-to-wear brand or more unusual patterns, they definitely have emphasized a more exaggerated and over-the-top look in recent years. In line with other fashion houses, they've pushed a more youthful, slimmer, trendy look. Now, a centerpiece of Keton's framing has always been that they use the best materials by the best craftsmen and therefore their extremely high price of $6,000 and up for a jacket is justified. As they quote Chiro Paone on their website, you get what you pay for, with the O of the four being the red dot from the Keton logo. Now, as I said, Keton offers a wide range of clothing products today. We'll focus on their sport coats and jackets because we believe that's at the core of their brand and that's what makes them unique and special. Here and there, I've seen a tuxedo jacket, but interestingly, on their website, there's no real mention of evening wear, no dinner jackets. Keon frames their jackets as being the epitome of the Neapolitan jacket, which means a very soft jacket that is natural and unstructured. They highlight the casual detail and the excellence paired with the top-of-line materials. If you want to learn more about the Neapolitan suit styling in general, you can check it out in this video. Keaton themselves describe the general fit of their jacket as a mix of nonchalant elegance and a level of casual with a sporting feel. It fits like a pullover, following the shape of the body, less rigidity and more relaxation. The former Keaton USA president Massimo Bizzocchi would usually publicly take the jacket off bunch it all together and then step on it and then take it apart, put it back on to show that it didn't wrinkle. Obviously, I had to try that too. So I balled it up, stumped on it and put it back on. Doesn't look that bad. I mean, yes, it shows how naturally the fabric is structured and how it goes back into shape as it should. It's great to know that you can bring your jacket when you travel, put it somewhere, put it on later and you don't have to think about ironing it. Now, that being said, I did the exact same thing with our Fort Belvedere prototype jacket, and it also doesn't have any wrinkles. I guess we both use quality materials and a soft construction. One thing that stands out about Keaton and their jackets is the wide range of bold colors, the interesting textures of their fabrics, and the fact that they're always super soft and comfortable. Yes, you get many blues, browns, and grays, but they're more unusual. And you also have pink, yellow, red, orange, green, and so forth. Kitan is also not afraid of bold patterns, large plaids, even large herringbones, hound's tooth, and so forth. They're all classic patterns with a twist. While most of our jackets are single-breasted, you can also get double-breasted jackets. And I remember back in the day, most jackets had flap pockets that could be tucked in so you had jetted pockets. Now, in line with most other brands, you see a lot more patch pockets, which are aligned with a more casual trend. Most of the single breasted jackets are three roll two, and they have working cuff buttons. I've seen some older jackets that had no vents, but today, basically all their jackets have side vents, which is a good thing. Their linings are made from Coupeau Bemberg, which is a synthetic material, but it's really great for jacket linings because it's anti-static, it can absorb things, it's breathable, and it's more durable than, let's say, silk, for example, or cotton. It's also better than polyester or any other material like nylon. So when it comes to lining, Bamberg is truly the best material, and that's what they use. Raphael's lapel point will remain missing for the duration of this video. We apologize for any sartorial distress this causes. All other jackets are fully canvassed, which means they're not glued, but that's something you should expect at that price point. Regarding their sizing, they use European sizing and often mention the drop. So let's say 
a size 54 in Keton would be a size 44 in the US. Keton then also mentions the drop, which is often an 8R for regular length, or L for long, or S for small, or 7 or 6. If you have more of a drop, it means there is a bigger drop from your chest to your waist, which gives you more of an hourglass shape. If you have a bit more of a belly, you want less of a drop. Frankly, though, their sizing has been all over the place. For example, the jacket I'm wearing here right now is a size 58, versus the jacket I cut apart is a size 54, but they're not that different. Also, I've tried other jackets, and typically they run small, but sometimes you have the exact same size, and the jackets fit very differently. The length is different, the sleeve length is different. Also, the sleeve on top can be very different in its width. These days, if you buy a new Keton jacket, you get a complimentary pocket square, which is nice when you spend $9,000 on a jacket. Now, let's look at the materials, because that's one of the key selling points that they stretch. And they always say, it's the nicest stuff, it's the best you can get. And based on my experience, I have to agree. Their materials are all spot on. You touch them, they're soft, they're comfortable, they always feel luxurious. What does it mean? Well, you're not gonna find a scratchy tweed or a thorn proof from Keton. If it looks like it, chances are it's blended with cashmere or made of all cashmere and super soft. Now, that also means they're not super hard wearing garments. So if you just have one sport coat, probably your key tone coat will wear out more quickly than if you get a more hardy wearing fresco fabric, for example. Now, because Ketone understands that their fabric is really important, they have five separate mills. And Ketone also acquired the Carlo Barbera mill in 2009 for 3.3 million euros. They're constantly experimenting with different wool that is smaller in micron and therefore softer. They also have Vicuña in their lineup, which is the most expensive fiber in the world, and cashmere. But the exclusivity for Keton means all their fabrics are made for Keton by Keton, and that's pretty cool. Themselves, they see the fabric to be the foundation their garment is built on. And based on what I've seen, based on what I've touched, yes, it is great stuff, especially if you like softer fabrics. And who doesn't like that? Apparently, they've even developed a proprietary method to dye and add a pattern to Vicuña, for example. They also claim to have a four-combed yarn. I would guess they mean maybe a four-ply, which is good for cashmere. But when you touch it, you can tell it's quality cashmere. When it comes to wool, they were one of the first that advertised their microns. It used to be 14 microns. Now it's 13.2 or even 12.8. They compared the 12.8 micron wool to Vicuña and called it the thinnest wool in the world. They also advertise a Solaro fabric that is more 13.2 microns. And to learn more about Solaro in general, check out this here. In terms of construction, Keton also highlights that they really have the highest standards. And to guarantee those, they started the School of Tailoring in 2001. There, people receive three years of tailoring training the first two years are about the general tailoring, and then the final year is about doing one production step with the idea that that person becomes an expert on this one step, and you just employ expert after expert after expert to then create the very best jacket. They also assert that the soft conforming drape can help to avoid fit issues. And I have to say, I've slipped and tried on many ketone jackets, and they always feel comfortable and non-restricting, which I appreciate. Compared to most other ready-to-wear jackets out there, they feel like you can really move around freely without any restriction or pull. As they claim, the harmony is provided by the deft touch of the artisan who eliminates, almost as if by magic, any imperfection that all human bodies inevitably conceal. Frankly, I think the floating canvas helps a lot with that. According to the Keton website, a suit has over 1,800 production steps and takes 25 hours of labor. At their Arzano factory, they have about 25 tailors and 150 finishers. 
While many other brands try to tout their technological advances, Keaton is proud of their traditional methods. Apparently, the jackets are hand cut and tacked without the use of a machine. The curved Barquetta chest pockets are hand positioned. Each buttonhole is sewn by hand and they're typically all beautiful. The Keaton buttonhole is typically rather short, especially if you compare it to, let's say, Anderson and Shepard, for example. Looking at the jacket, it also seems like all the pick stitching is done by hand. You can see it by the irregularity of the stitches. And yes, there are now machines that try to pretend to be irregular so it looks more handmade, but this to me seems like a real handmade stitch. Overall, I'd say their handwork is less ostentatious than what I've sometimes seen in Naples, where you get two rows of pick stitching that's quite contrasting. Typically, the Tikiton jackets that I've seen are typically rather quiet and have a single row of stitching, much like you'd find in Germany or England. They also do a neat job on pattern matching, and they use good old school eight kilogram irons, which is about 17.6 pound. Can you imagine moving such an iron around? Well, that's how you get that nice drape and you can really give cloth a certain shape that you want it to take. Now, of course, marketing can always sound great. So I just bought a jacket and cut it apart. First, I removed the lining at the top, ripped it open, and I could see the shoulder pad and the full canvas. As you can see, the stitching on the padding is very regular, which means it's a machine stitch. Then, if you look at the canvas, right, it's a clear sign of a Strobel machine, which is a great machine. There's one for the left lapel and one for the right lapel, and they sew everything together so you get that nice lapel roll and curve that is constant. You can either do this by hand, which takes a lot of time, or you can do it by machine, which saves a lot of time. The effect is the same. So by using a machine, it doesn't make the jacket worse, but it takes less time. So I was surprised to see that because for the price of $6,000 or $12,000, I would have expected for it to be all handmade. Then again, if you look at other parts of the jacket, like the collar, for example, it's also padded by machine, not by hand. Clear evidence of handwork were the buttonhole, of course, there was the pick stitching, but all the other straight lines, as you can see, they're all done by machine. At the hem, for example, you can see only the pick stitching is handmade, then there is a more regular stitch that is machine made, and another regular stitch that is machine made. Yes, the things may be cut by hand, and you can see they're taped in the areas where they need extra strength, such as your sleeve hems, or the part around your vents. And yes, it is a fully canvas jacket, which is a good product, but you can find many fully canvas jackets from other companies too that use a Strobel machine. That's nothing super special. In a grand scale of things, there's of course a lot more glue jackets and you get a quality jacket with ketone, but it is not this purely handmade jacket that's that kind of make out to be. Now in today's video, I'm wearing a 100% cashmere jacket, which currently on their website would go for around 10 to $11,000. I think I paid 2% of that price on eBay. And if you want to learn how you can score bargains, you can check out that video here. Frankly, this was hardly ever worn, basically like brand new. Someone just bought it and just didn't wear it. Good for me. I like that it has contrasted mother of pearl buttons as well as patch pockets. The lapel are a bit on the slimmer side and typically ketone lapels traditionally were wider. So I don't know if that was just a fluke or a more modern style, but I think I prefer slightly wider lapels. I've definitely tried on many other ketone jackets before, and I liked about this one that the upper sleeve was rather wide, which, when it isn't, feels quite uncomfortable. Again, there's really no way to know what the sleeve feels like unless you put it on or you know the exact measurement. In terms of construction, you can see it has more of a Neapolitan sleeve hat with a few wrinkles, the Grinze, and that's okay. If you like that, you can get it from other companies. Personally, I like the somewhat roped shoulder more, and I've seen older ketone jackets who also had roped shoulders. Let's see if this jacket also passes the Bizocchi test. And sure it does, but again, so does our Fort Belvedere jacket. I think 
it is not something that is only exclusive to ketone. So now the big question, is a ketone sport coat really worth its money? Now on the product side, you get a quality product that is well thought through and well designed. For example, the lining, there is a little bit of a reserve in your top shoulder to make everything more comfortable. And I think that's a good thing. Yet the interior of the jacket are largely made by machine. Yes, someone may operate the machine, but all the padding of the lapel and the collar, for example, are done by machine. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't decrease the quality, but it doesn't justify that kind of a price that they're asking for it. At least in my opinion. What I really like about Ketone are the range of movement and the softness of their fabrics, they always feel luxurious. I'm also a fan of their bolder patterns and colors and think it makes them stand out from the crowd. Obviously, they control everything from their labor pool to their fabrics, and that is quite a feat. I think if you compare it to other companies, I'll probably prefer it to Brunello Cucinelli. It definitely feels like the fabrics are more luxurious than Isaiah. In terms of construction, I would say they're somewhat on par. Also, I think Brioni's fabrics are not quite as nice as the ones you get from Ketone. In the past, I also had some Ketone suits with their pants. They're more of a regular rise and not a true high-rise pair of trousers, which is what I prefer. Overall, in terms of quality, I think ketone jackets are some of the most comfortable ready to garments I've ever put on, and it's consistently the case, and their fabrics are second to none. So would I buy this on retail price? Absolutely not. I'd never do that. I'd go to a bespoke tailor, or I go to a major measure company, perfect my pattern in the right fabric. I could do that three, four times, but the fifth time it would be absolutely perfect. So the fit would be better or as good as what I can get from a ketone. The material will be maybe not 100% there, but 99, 98% there, and I pay less going forward. On the flip side, if you want a what you see is what you get approach and you like their style, you can put it on, you can see how it feels, you don't have to waste time traveling back and forth to your tailor, then it might be an attractive option. That being said, if you can find ketone jackets either on sale or on eBay, what I've found, a lot of ketone jackets are never worn out. Even though the materials are so luxurious, it seems like the buyers have enough money that they can buy multiple jackets, they only wear them a few times, they get bored of them, and they move on to the next one, which can be great for you if you're okay with having a gently used garment. Sure, if money is of no concern to you, it would be a lot of fun to probably just buy those jackets left and right, wear them once, and just give them away. But as Giro Paone said himself, the greatest virtue of Neapolitans is the art of making do. In today's outfit, I'm wearing this Ketone navy blazer made of 100% cashmere in a 6-2 button configuration with patch pockets. I'm combining it with a white and blue striped shirt that is designed to not be worn with neckwear. My pocket square is a Art Nouveau inspired print on silk wool from Fort Belvedere and you can find it in our store just like the pair of green and brown socks I'm wearing. They pair well with my greenish chinos, which are a prototype that we're testing right now. My shoes are from Crocodile Jones. They have a wingtip with broguing and a silver buckle from the hand trade line. Matching the shoe buckles, I have a white gold ring with a star sapphire and baguette diamonds on the side. Today's fragrance is the Darby from Roberto Ugolini who is also a bespoke shoemaker who loves cologne. It's a very strong, intense cologne. It's an eau de parfum with a 20% oil concentration. And you can learn more about it here. 